the Browns at 2-2. Two and two. The New England Patriots at 4-0, and, oh and we're underway. This will be Hobbs from the 2. Further than that, right about the 20-yard line, and that'll bring Tom Brady onto the field. 13 touchdown passes. He leads the NFL in that category, completing an amazing and incredible 79.2% of his passes. The line that will protect him is missing center Dan Copen. Russ Polkstein starts in his place. The backs and receivers, and what will Randy do today? Randy Moss, four straight 100-yard receiving games. He has seven touchdown catches, and that leads the NFL. Brady from the shotgun on first down. Makes an adjustment and outtakes the snap and gives to Sammy Morris. And Morris gets two, maybe three yards on the play. Now Romeo Cornell coached the Patriots 3-4 defense as New England defensive coordinator. That's what the Browns play. Roy, Kelly, and Smith across the front. Young and strong linebackers featuring DeQuell Jackson, who's a big-time tackler and Cameron Wimbley, who's the Browns' sack leader. Second and on the secondary, a terrific rookie at one corner, and Eric Wright, and on the other side, talented Lee Bodden. And we get a whistle and a flag and a false start on New England. False start, 81, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Randy Moss. Bill, Bill, Bill Belichick Bill. wondering, did one of my wide receivers really just have a false start? They don't go on the snap count anyway. All they go on is the movement of the football. So Brady now with a second and 12. And the throw his first pass of the day and completes it across the 20 to about the 25 yard line. His tight end, Kyle Brady, and make that just another of many completions for Brady so far this young season. And you see what is happening right now for New England. They're operating out of the no huddle. They're operating out of the shotgun. Tom not going back in. He wants to keep this Cleveland defense a little unsure of exactly what they're going to see. Brady and this offense have been red hot. Four straight wins by 20 or more points. Third and five. Brady with all kinds of time running out of it now and throws complete to Moss across the 40 to the 42 and a first down for New England. I remember yesterday's conversation. We talked to Lee Bodden, the cornerback for Cleveland. What's your impression of Tom Brady? I see him standing in the pocket way too long, and that's exactly what happened here. Randy Moss ran a pattern, stopped, and then decided to run another one. Brady had that long to find it. Here's Sammy Morris with a hole on the left side and pulls his way out to the 50-yard line. Sammy Morris, a 117-yard rushing game the last time out against Cincinnati. That's a 5.6 yards per carry average he had that day. And I'll guarantee you the Cleveland defense was not expecting a hurry-up offense from the Patriots. The no huddle at the line. Running plays with lots of time left on the play clock. On second and one, Morris gets the call for the first down to the Cleveland 46. While it's not quite the two-minute, Tom Brady is snapping the football with a good 20 seconds left on the play clock. And now that he's served notice, what's he going to do? He kind of has a little loose huddle. And is going to take his time and be a little more deliberate this time around. Bill Belichick looks on from the sideline. Everybody think if you think he'd be jolly because his Patriots are 4 0, think again. Are you kidding me? The more they win, the tougher he'll get. That's, uh, that's in the coaching manual. Brady again with time. Over the middle, coming across the field is West Welker and inside the 40 to the Cleveland 38. Greg, that's one of those short passes that you see quarterbacks overthrow, throw behind the guy, maybe throw it a little low. It's one of the most difficult throws for a quarterback to make, and Tom Brady that time delivered it right on the palms. Tom Brady now three for three, throwing the football for 31 yards. And we're going to give it to Sammy Morris. Morris rolls his way to the 35, getting all of this duty in place of Lawrence Maroney. Yeah, Lawrence Maroney, who's their primary running back, is missing his second consecutive game because of a groin injury. 
and take a look at that. That's production. That's not waiting to find out. That's serving notice on your opponent right off the bat that you are focused and you came prepared when you score on every one of your opening drives. And this drive so far, we'll see if it results in a score, but it's been solid to date. First down from the Browns, 35. Brady drops, throws, far side, complete, and out of bounds, Randy Moss. Another first down, this one to the Cleveland 15-yard line. And not a good sign when at the end of this, Eric Wright, the rookie, puts his arms up in here. He never turns around. He has no idea. He puts his arm. What? What? What am I supposed to do? Well, hunting for the football is one thing that will help you. Fourth first down of the game for the Patriots already. Kevin Falk into the backfield now for the Patriots. Ninth play of this drive. We had a little movement up front. And I think Matt Light flinched at left tackle, but the Browns moved first, and Light will argue that he was he was drawn. Neutral zone infraction. 55 defense. Five-yard penalty. Our referee is Walt down. Coleman. We'll send, <laughs> we'll send someone down yes. to let Walt know we're on yeah. this side of the we'll field. We'll call him wrong way, <laughs> Coleman. Now, <laughs> Jim Marshall has nothing on Walt Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Walt, we're over here. So first and five from the ten. And a whistle. Nice play of this drive. Ball. Back to the line of scrimmage. To 12, Jackson, number 58, the second year linebacker out of Maryland making the stop. Well, Josh McDaniels, the 31-year-old offensive coordinator of the Patriots, he has called a beautiful drive so far. That's about the only play that wasn't effective, gaining nothing there on first down. But, boy, this has been a thing of beauty. Ten yards from a touchdown, five yards from a first down as Brady looks at second and five. Again, lots of time, throws inside the five, and that is complete to Dante Stallworth. Forward progress will be marked at the three, and it'll be first and goal. Boy, every cliche you've ever heard about a quarterback sitting in the rocking chair, being comfortable in the pocket, whatever you want to use, use it to describe Tom Brady. No rush at all, he's just wide open planning his feet able to stride into the ball and he's finding open people last week bill belichick was upset about what he felt was the patriots inefficiency in the red zone in their win over cincinnati made him do a little extra work in practice from the three left side batted at the line of scrimmage incomplete first incompletion of the day for brady there goes his percentage yeah This just a three-step drop. One, two, three. There goes the ball. And Jones gets a does a good job of leaping up in the air. Sean Jones is strong safety. Yeah, Tom Brady telling us that, you know, they have a practice routine and, and they were down finishing up the red zone and Bill started yelling at him. It's so mad about last week. They ran a dozen goal line plays that weren't on the practice schedule. That's the way that Belichick keeps the heat on this team. Double tight end now for New England on second and goal. This is Sammy Morris, and Morris back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Simon Frazier, Andre Davis on the stop. And all of a sudden, Cleveland's showing a little life defensively. They got a couple. That's Todd Grantham, their defensive coordinator. He's in his third year, been there with Romeo since Romeo arrived. Boy, this would be monstrous for Cleveland if they could deny the Patriots the end zone and force a field goal. Huge. Brady from the shotgun. Play clock down to three, to two, to one. He got the playoff. Running out of time, throws, and it is almost intercepted at the goal line. Eric Wright was there as well as Sean Jones. Ooh, and Tom really tried to jam that throw in there, and this maybe should have been intercepted. That ball is right on the hands of Wright. Does it get stripped away by his own teammate? Well, it was right in between. 
but that was close to being a pick. He tried to stuff it in there to Jabbar Gaffney. And now Steven Gostowski from 20 yards out. He's perfect. 13 play, 78 yard drive, but Brady and the Patriots have to settle for a field goal. 3 0 in New England. The official numbers on New England's scoring drive as you see Tom Brady seated there next to Randy Moss. Randy Jeff. Moss, he says, he says he's the smartest football player he's ever been around, period. Yep, that's Tom Brady provides so much beyond just handing it off and throwing the football. There's Josh Cribbs, by the way. He is the number one kick return man in the National Football League. So we have a couple of good ones here. This is Cribbs from the three. To the 25, bounces outside, back inside, across the 30, and close to the 35-yard line. Fine return by Josh Cribbs. Good field position for Derek Anderson when we come back to Foxborough. His teammates call him D.A., Derek Anderson. Nine touchdown passes this season. That's the fourth best number in the NFL as we begin week five. And the Browns start from their own 34-yard line. And Jamal Lewis carries off the left side. Has a little running room across the 40 to the 45 and a first down. Nice blocking off the left side. That Cleveland offensive line, the one to watch today and for years to come. Left tackle Joe Thomas, the Bruins' first-round draft pick out of Wisconsin. Some big play people among the receivers. Kellen Winslow and Braylon Edwards have huge yards per catch numbers. And Jamal Lewis comes off of 216 yards rushing against Cincinnati. There's Joe Thomas right now. Jason Wright is in the backfield for the Browns. Great drop for Anderson. Throws to this side, and that's complete to Lawrence Vickers out of the backfield, and he is up to the 49-yard line. The Patriots' 3-4 defense ranks number one in the NFL. Ty Warren, Vince Wolfwark, Jarvis Green across the front. Outstanding linebackers in Brable, Thomas, Teddy Bruschi, and Roosevelt Colvin. And the starting secondary doesn't yet include Rodney Harrison, who returns to active duty today, but he will see some action. Two tight ends now for Cleveland. And the give is to Wright. And Wright just across midfield into New England territory where Vrabel and Bruschi converge. Greg, you mentioned Rodney Harrison, and he'll play today. James Sanders has really done a good job of replacing Rodney Harrison at the safety position. He really has played well, and again, such a veteran group. Rodney's still on the sidelines. You know he's dying to get in there. He looked good in practice this week. Came back in shape. And of course, with his smarts, he knows the game plan. Third and four. Anderson throws on the slant. Complete. That's Joe Juravicious, and Juravicious to the 32 and a first down. And Juravicious is going to get room today because of Braylon Edwards and Kellen Winslow. You can see Anderson locks in on him all the way, and why not? When you're that wide open, it's not going to hurt to go ahead and look at your intended receiver. But the bulk of the coverage, they're going to go to Edwards, they're going to go to Winslow, they're going to try to take them away from Anderson and see if he can adjust. Romeo Cornell knew that was going to happen. Can Derek Anderson make those adjustments? Jurovich is out for a breather. Tim Carter replaces him. Anderson deep drop this time goes far left side and that's complete to Braylon Edwards Edwards inside the 15 and another first down for the Browns Well, and Eugene Wilson ended up on the ground. I don't know what kind of a move Edwards puts on him Again though Anderson working the left side of the field all the way he's looking at Braylon Edwards But when he makes a break to the sidelines it puts Eugene Wilson down and listen to the crowd Rodney Harrison just came into the game There's Harrison. Wright and Vickers in the backfield. First down from the 12. This is Wright, left side, with Vickers locking in front of him. To the five, to the end zone. Just out of bounds before he got there. Oh, Lawrence Vickers, a fullback. That's what you want out of a fullback. Jason Wright is going to get the corner. He's going to do it by breaking a tackle. Right here, that was supposed to be left guard. He fights off that tackle right there by Colvin. 
But then look at Vickers. Whoa. Right into the face and the grill of Ellis Hobbs, knocking him all the way back into the end zone. Once again, Wright and Vickers in the backfield. Quick pass on the fade, incomplete. Intended for Juravicious. R-I-S-K-Y. <laughs> that was real close. That was closer to a turnover than it was to a touchdown. This ball has to be high and over the top. And it is almost, almost a little low. Ellis Hobbs defending. It'll be second and goal. This time, Jason Wright is the lone back behind Anderson. Wright gets the call straight ahead. Nothing doing. Okay. Look at these Patriots go after the football. <laughs> to his credit, they didn't get it away from Jason Wright. Wasn't through lack of effort. Well, just like the Patriots on the drive before, who drove all the way down and then stalled, all of a sudden inside of the goal line, it's gotten a little tight for Cleveland. Patriots had a 78-yard drive. This one for the Browns is 65 yards so far. Once again, Jason Wright, the third year back out of Northwestern, behind Derek Anderson. He's going to throw on third down. Pump fake, and now he's moving. Being chased, throws, batted in the air and intercepted in the end zone. Junior Seau picked it off. Anderson tries so hard to make something happen. All he did was kill a drive with a bad, bad throw. Now you know you can follow your fantasy players in all of today's NFL action with lightning fast live scoring game centers online now at CBSSports.com. Jamal Lewis ran on the first play from scrimmage, didn't appear again, and now headed off to the Cleveland locker room. We'll get a report on him as soon as one becomes available. Meanwhile, from the 20-yard line, Brady and the Patriots. Sammy Morris straight ahead. You know, Dan, you specifically asked Bill Belichick yesterday his thoughts on Derek Anderson. And Bill, I thought it was as honest an assessment as you can get from a head coach. He said, young quarterbacks, they have talent or else they wouldn't be playing at this level. Therefore, he's going to make some good throws, and you can count on him to make some bad ones once in a while. Yeah, he was being very honest about it, and it wasn't, you know, it didn't think he was going to hurt them with his feet. And again, with a young quarterback, it's all about decision making. And that was a poor choice by Anderson down there to throw that ball. Everybody was covered. Brady throws this side incomplete. And that's intended for Dante Stallworth, the first NFL Today Report of the Day with JB. Hey, Greg and Dan, take a look at this excellent play by Kerry Rhodes of the Jets. Stripping Brandon Jacobs of the ball right here and recovering it. And poetic justice. He takes it 11 yards to the pay dirt. Jets score first up 7-0. Greg and Dan. JB, that's a triple-double. You get the forced fumble, <laughs> you get the recovery, and you get the touchdown. Tom Brady started five out of five completions. He is 0 for 3 since then from the shotgun. Pump fake. Throws far side for Moss. Incomplete. Eric Wright was covering. And that'll bring the punting unit up. That was a quick three and out for the Patriots. Tom Brady for one of the few times this season under a little bit of pressure in the pocket. You can see he steps up. He does have plenty of time. He gets hit at the very end. But he had plenty of time to deliver a good, clean ball. It didn't look, I don't know if Randy Moss ran a little different pattern than Tom was expecting there. Looked a little confused over there. Josh Chris deep for the kick from Chris Hansen. And he pulls it in with the fair catch. A shaky one, too, at the 32-yard line. Another timeout at Foxborough, where New England leads 3-0. 2.54 to play in the first quarter. 3-0 lead for New England, and that is Jason Wright. The third year running back out of Northwestern. The word we get on Jamal Lewis, an injury to his right foot. His return is questionable. On first down, Anderson throws. Batted in the air. Intercepted. 
That's Asante Samuel, his third of the season. Still on his feet and inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Was that Teddy Bruschi that got a hand on the ball? A couple people were diving for it. Again, another tipped ball that ends up being a Derek Anderson interception. All right, this time Anderson's going to work the right. No, it's actually hit at the line of scrimmage. Adalus Thomas, I believe, got it. Yeah, right there, Adalus Thomas gets it with his left hand. So twice a carom has gone to a Patriot. Once to Junior Seau, and this time to Asante Samuel. Great field position for Brady. Play fake. Time to throw. On the move now and throws, and that's complete. Dante Stallworth. Stallworth still on his feet. Inside the 10 5 touchdown. <laughs> 34 yards. Lee Bodden, I believe, is down on the field for the Cleveland Browns. Jamal Lewis already in the locker room. Bodden is the guy that's trying to block Stallworth. I mean, trying to cover Stallworth. A lot of contact there between the two. But that is a nice catch and run by Stallworth, who says, I'd like to get in on the touchdown parade. Randy Moss is getting them all. Wilker got one, and that's my first one of the season. And with Baden on the turf, we'll take a timeout. 2.33 to play in the first. Injured Cleveland Brown, Lee Baden was able to walk off the field. And he will watch as Gostowski goes for the extra point. 34 yard touchdown pass. The kick is good. You turn the ball over against the Patriots at your own peril. 10 nothing, New England. Derek Anderson's record, not Kane. No, no. The two for two. Yeah. That's ball security, especially on the road. Paramount. Josh Cribbs deep. And this is Cribbs from the three. With a running start to the 20. Still on his feet. And forward close to the 25-yard line. Derek Anderson's day so far and there's nothing to write home about. No, and it, it's interesting that Asante Samuel got the second one because the first one bounces off his hand right to Junior Seau. But the second one, it's Adelis Thomas that knocks it to Asante Samuel. So I guess Samuel, he knew he'd let one get away, but good fortune was smiling his way as Adelis Thomas again continues to pay dividends, a free agent signing. Huge no. signing for New England. Anderson back to work from the 25. And this is Jason Wright, left side. And the holes that were there on the first drive, not there now. Adelis Thomas plugging that one up. Well, the Browns with, with Kellen Winslow at tight end seldom put him right up against the tackle because he's not a blocker. I mean, he is a receiving tight end. He's more wide receiver than tight end. So sometimes it's really difficult to develop a strong side running game when you don't have a real dominant blocking tight end. So the Cleveland offense has got to work around that. Kellen Winslow, his addition to this team is in space. That's where he's at his best. Anderson throws far side and that's complete. Braylon Edwards with the catch and run to the 39 for a first down. You know, interesting, too, when we were talking with Derek Anderson yesterday, in, in your short tenure, what have you learned? He said he's learned that punting isn't the worst thing in the world. And it is not. You know, it's the old adage, Jenny. Any drive that ends in a kick is a good drive for a quarterback, whether it's an extra point, a field goal, or a punt. Uh, what that means is there wasn't a turnover. I think Cleveland has had their two mistakes today. Any more might be fatal. First down now from the 39. This is Wright. Jason Wright gave get a lot more work than he thought he would when he woke up this morning. Well, now we're still awaiting word on Jamal Lewis, who went in presumably, uh, presumably for some sort of x-ray on his foot. We'll uh, pass along any result, but 
Boy that means that this guy Jason Wright has to do all the heavy lifting. And Romeo Cornell was so counting on Jamal Lewis in the running game to occupy a lot of the clock today. Well and they were all thrilled with how Jamal has been playing the game That's this right. year. Well he's about 15 pounds lighter. Looks rejuvenated. Anderson on second and six. Play fakes to right. And they're going to go throw deep down the middle. It is incomplete. Intended for Tim Carter. Ellis Hobbs was right there with him. Yeah, they were running stride for stride. Looked like Carter might have had a half a step on Hobbs. Take a look at this. I give Anderson credit. He found the single coverage, and that's a lot of pressure. But Hobbs was right there. It lost his footing a little bit. You know, Anderson probably felt like he was back in college. We were talking to him yeah. about his days at Oregon State. He said the offense was pretty much just chuck it. That's that's what he said. Drop back and chuck it. He said if it was an interception, eh, wasn't that big a deal. From the shotgun, quick slant incomplete. Intended for Braylon Edwards. Well, no surprise that on third down, Dean Pease and this this defensive unit, they're going to bring pressure. This defense is all about pressure from all different places. And that time, a quick throw, too quick. Anderson couldn't get set and led him too far. On fourth and six now, it'll be Scott Player. High floater. Grabbed at the 11 by Welker. Tried to return on the right side. He's across the 20 yard line. With nine seconds to play in the first quarter, I want to remind you, today's doubleheader day here on CBS. Up next, it's Ladanian Tomlinson and the San Diego Chargers against Jay Cutler and the Denver Broncos or the Baltimore Ravens out in San Francisco against the 49ers. Check your local listings. I always believe that urgency can make for a really good football team. You think there's a sense of urgency? In San Three down, Diego? I'm out! There better be. <laughs> good point there. If there's not, see you later. Nine seconds to play here in the first quarter. This is Sammy Morris trying the right side and running room across the 30 out to the 34 yard line and very close to a first down as time winds down. We have come to the end of the first quarter in Foxborough. 10 0 Patriots. Back after this, you're watching the NFL on CBS. To the 45. Falk and Sammy Morris doing double duty here because of Lawrence Maroney's absence. Yeah, right now both teams have their primary running back unavailable. Maroney didn't even dress today. He's got a groin problem. He didn't play in last week's game either. And I know that's got to be a little bit disappointing to the Patriots. Without Corey Dillon here this year, Lawrence Maroney really being counted on to, to carry a bigger share and to be durable. Yeah. Thank heavens for Sammy Morris. That's what they're saying in New England. Third and four now for Brady. From the shotgun. Complete and drop. Dante Stallworth coming across the field. Had it. Had first down yardage. And let it go. Dante Stallworth had a lot of yardage. If he's able to hold on to that. He is separated himself he may have he might have had a chance to go down the sideline for a monstrous yardage he knew it and boy he just couldn't keep his eye on the ball so once again Josh Cribbs deep for the Browns at his own 10 yard line puts it up fair catch called for and made at the 11. 11.49 to play in the first half. Brady in the Pats by 10. Well, New England's running game already minus the services of Lawrence Maroney. They're working on Kevin Falk on the sideline. but yeah, They're examining his uh, right knee, although at the end of that examination, he hopped up and pulled his back up and looked like he was uh, feeling, uh, feeling okay. Teddy Bruschi looking on from the New England defense. There's Falk. So here are Anderson and the Browns from their own 12 yard line. And 
what do we get here? False start. False start, 68. Offense. Five yard penalty. That's the right guard, Seth McKinney. That's Marshall Ara. Oh, Marshall. Yeah, Kevin see, Falk. Yeah, you see Kevin Falk right there. Had one of the Browns fall on his right leg. Looks like Robert Smith kind of fell on it. That could have been worse. First and 15. Anderson gives to right. Right trying to turn the corner. Rodney Harrison there to meet him. Along with Ellis Hobbs to New York. James Brown. The hey, NFL Greg, today. I know Dan Noah for two months. Back to Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff. Yeah, JB, oh. of all the guys in the league, you, the last guy you want to see get hit in the head is Trent Green. Anderson into the flat. That's complete to Steve Hyden. And Hyden out to about the 15-yard line. Rodney Harrison there to meet him. You know, Greg, if Webster had a definition for competitiveness, it would be Trent Green with a history of the severe concussion he had last year downfield trying to throw a block for a teammate. Are you kidding me? Now you can call that foolish or whatever, but that's that's a competitor. <laughs> oh, I hope he's okay. I think you're right. I don't think any other player in the league would call it foolish. Third and seven, shotgun. Anderson throwing behind his intended receiver. Kellen Winslow. Well, Rodney Harrison right there locked up on Kellen Winslow. <laughs> he got his hands on, but again, that move by Winslow didn't fool Harrison at all. And there is their second at number one draft choice, Brady Quinn. Joe Thomas was their first. He was the second at 27. Wes Welker. Tracking this punt, it goes out of bounds, very close to midfield. Once again, the Patriots will have excellent field position. 10-29 to play in the first half. There's some good news for the Cleveland Browns and their fans. Jamal Lewis out of the locker room and back on the side where it appeared they were taping that injured right foot. And he's putting his shoe on right now, so you presume the x-rays came back negative. Hopefully he'll be able to play. Brady and the Pats from their own 49-yard line. On the reverse, Dante Stallworth, running room, 45, gets a block, out of bounds, appears to be enough for a first down. Boy, you can hear, was, you can hear those just, Browns oh. yelling reverse all the way up here. Well, well, look how they sell the play action up into the middle. Great ball handling by Brady. They sealed off the contain on the other side. Randy Moss comes up with a block. How about Randy Moss? Take a picture of this. <laughs> He's out there working on Lee Bodden. And then he comes back off of Bodden. And he goes ahead and picks off Poole. How about that for Big Randy? Keith Evans into the game for the first time today. He throws a block out of the backfield. Pass this side to Welker. And Welker down at the 32. Wes Welker. Didn't have a Cleveland Brown within a good three or four yards of him when he caught that ball. Again, the presence of speed like you have with Stallworth and Moss. Wes Welker has just a playground underneath in which to work. And we haven't even seen anything out of Ben Watson yet. A wonderful receiving tight end. Brady, 8 out of 13 for 105 yards. And the give is to Sammy, or Sammy Morris. And Morris... Close to the 25 for a first down. Well, Sammy Morris always had effective, productive games against the New England Patriots when he was in Miami and when he was in Buffalo. So Bill Belichick says enough of that nonsense. If he's going to have those productive games, let's uh, let's see him have them in Foxborough. Sammy Morris had a 117-yard game last week. The only other 100-yard game he ever had was against these Patriots. Brady still with the football. And all kinds of time. Far side of the field, complete inside the 10 to Stallworth. And out of bounds, it'll be first and goal. Well, this is where the defensive backs for Cleveland go into the huddle and go, hey, guys, can we have some help? 
can we get a little pressure? There's a limit to how long we can maintain coverage on Tom Brady and this group of receivers. Without pressure, the Browns secondary has no chance whatsoever. They just don't have a chance. And to this point, there's been precious little pressure. First and goal now at the, at the nine yard line. Stallworth, three catches, 58 yards on the day. Brady, with time, this side. Welker, and out of bounds. You know, Dan, you're right. If you don't get pressure on Brady, he's not going to make a mistake. No, and, and you know, it's, any NFL quarterback without pressure is going to play really well. But when you take Tom Brady and, and these receivers and factor in the no pressure clause, well, then it, it's a catastrophe. And you can see right now this New England offensive line is in control. Two tight ends now for Brady. On second down, and Brady wants a timeout. 7.38 to play first half. Timeout. Brady goes to the sideline, and we go to a timeout. At almost 432 yards a game, the Patriots sport the second best offense in the NFL and has been showing on the board. And look at that points differential. They've been averaging 37 a game and giving up only 12. Thus, the plus 25. Lofty, gaudy numbers. And Bill Belichick, a prime proponent of the fact that, you know, that was last week and the week before and the week before that. We're talking about this week. I believe he is a in-the-moment coach. Second and goal. Sammy Morris. Inside the five to about the four. But if he has an opportunity, he'll beat his team up over their problems down in the red zone. And here they are again facing a third and goal. He pounded them with a little extra practice this week, expressed his displeasure of being this close to the goal line and having to send out Guskowski. Uh, these, these 11 guys, if they head to the sidelines without getting in, there's a scolding coming. Stallworth and Welker to the top of the screen. Randy Moss at the bottom. And the give is to Morris, and Morris tackled in the backfield. Robert Smith, number 98, out of Michigan State. Well, that's how you disrupt a play. Look how he gets off the ball, and he gets around Russ Hochstein, the center. Keep in mind, Hochstein's in there because Dan Copen, the, the normal center, is missing today's game because of an ankle. Robert Smith, his team needed a big play. He provided so Gostowski from 25 yards out to give the Patriots a 13 nothing lead. And it is up and good. Six minutes, 12 seconds to play in the first half. Two red zone trips, two field goals for the Pats today. They lead by 13. Welcome back to Foxborough. 6-12 to play in the first half. Gostowski set to kick it away to Josh Cribbs, who has 54 return yards today and has become Cleveland's all-time leader in return yardage. And he'll add to it here from the five. And down at the 20, and a penalty marker flies. See what Walt Coleman and company have in store for us. Holding 58, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Just what the Browns didn't need. You know, I know you enjoyed it too, Dan. It was a delight talking with Romeo Cornell and getting his thoughts on, on not only his team, but also coming back to play against his former team, the New England Patriots. I mean, so many fond memories there. But he's three years removed. He's invested in Cleveland. Jason Wright still on his feet. He bangs his way out to the 15-yard line. It'll be a second and five. The, the one thing you know that's going through Romeo Cornell's mind right now is how many times he's been on the Patriots' sideline and watched other teams come in here and self-destruct. You, you can't make it easy for the Patriots. 
and you make it easy for them by turning the ball over by having three and outs giving them short fields he's seen it and now he's living and Romeo's a master of the understatement and I told his team he had to play really good to yeah. win this game Anderson with time and the short flip now and out of the backfield is Lawrence Vickers and Vickers very close to a first no back to the uh, to the 20 yard line and is a first down Dallas Thomas was there in coverage but not before Vickers and that was a good job of Derek Anderson of going through his reads and we've got somebody else hurt now over on the far sideline in front of the Patriot bench that's Asante Samuel Asante with an interception earlier in this game so already got three on the year that was two coming in and he's got one today So he'll try to shake it off on the sideline. Meanwhile, first down at the 10 yard line for Anderson and the Browns. And we asked Romeo how he got that first name. He said, I don't really know, but I just have a sister named Juliet. <laughs> and he was serious. Yeah, he was serious. Right, right, with a hole on the left side across the 25 to the 27. That's where Vince Wolfork pulls him down. 4.45 and counting to play in the first half. And Cleveland right now doing, I think, what they have to do. You can't just ask Derek Anderson to throw the football on every down to get back into this football game. Go ahead, try to establish a running game. Try to keep... The Patriots offense over on the sideline. Just move the chains. Get a couple of firsts down. Anything to build confidence. On second and three, right up the middle is Jason Wright. And right to the 33 and a first down again for the Browns. Again, good solid blocking. And boy, we've seen a good day's work so far out of Lawrence Vickers, the fullback. He had the key block right there. And again, Jamal Lewis had an explosive run at the very beginning of the game and then went into the locker room to have his foot x-rayed. He's back out here, but he hasn't played since. That's Vickers and Wright in the backfield. This is Vickers. Or Wright, rather. And Wright to the 38. Well, Romeo Cornell said, I know they're going to try to take my stars out of the game. Well, Lewis took himself out of the game by getting hurt after one 11-yard carry. But you can see that Braylon Edwards has a pair of catches. But Kellen Winslow, I don't believe they've even thrown to him yet. And, oh, yeah, one time. That's right, they did. He couldn't get away from Rodney Harrison. Second and five now. Once again, on the ground. And once again, Jason Wright. To about the 42, looks like it'll be a third and one. Vince Wilfork in there on the bottom of that. We're told that Joe Juravicious, the Cleveland wide receiver, has suffered a knee injury. We'll not see him again here in the first half. Here comes the crowd into play. They'd like to see Tom Brady get another shot at it before halftime. First man through Vickers and Vickers across the 45 to the 46 and a first down. Well, here Cleveland finally getting something going offensively, although you know that New England is willing to go ahead and give up some yardage in this situation, realizing that there's only two minutes left in the half. But this offensive line suddenly able to, to root the New England guys back a little bit. Two that minutes to play. Two minutes to play in the first half here in Foxborough. 13 nothing New England. We're back after this. Just remember the Sprint Halftime Report coming up. Two minutes playing time. JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, Coach Cower back in the studios in New York with all the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's the Sprint Halftime Report. It's time for them to go vertical. They've been running the ball effectively. 
but they're at their 45 with two minutes to go. Full start, 17, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Wow, we, Edwards. We've seen two wide receivers now get false starts. Randy Moss had one for New England. Now Braylon Edwards. UX linemen love that, don't you? Well, no, it's, it, there's no excuse. The <laughs> linemen are listening to a snap count. A wide receiver is just standing out there looking at the football. I repeat, you love yeah. it. Well, I, I, only if you love stupidity. First and 15. Straight drop for Henderson. Arm hit as he threw it. Intercepted. Junior Seau. Seau to the 30. To the 25. Inside the 25-yard line. Well, you can see that Derek Anderson's arm was hit as he was trying to throw. The opposite of Brady. This time Anderson it was under pressure. Let's see who gets it. Right there. He gets hit right on the forearm. I think Mike Vrabel. This will tell us for sure. Yep, Mike Vrabel coming in from the outside. Gets his right arm on the arm of Anderson. And again, Junior Seau. What is and he somebody doing? explain that to me. Meanwhile, Adalis Thomas is limping off the field. And that would be a serious loss for this New England defense. For Junior Seau, 17th career interception. Uh, th this, this is big here for the Patriots with Adalis Thomas walking off. He's reluctant to put much weight on that left leg. What was Junior Seau doing <laughs> waving that ball around? I have no idea. Ke Kellen Winslow was right beside him. He almost, he, he could have swatted that away. I tend to think Bill Belichick may ask him that. Why? And I'm not sure Junior will have an explanation. Now Brady from the 25-yard line, from the shotgun, throws. That's stalwart inside the 20 to the 18. Remember, New England already had to use one of their timeouts, so they're down to a pair. And they're inside the dreaded red zone. Brady, another short pass, complete. Ben Watson, the tight end, inside the 10, first and goal. Clock continues to move, 70 seconds to play. And and Benjamin Watson finally gets in the game, and now we've got Davin Holly down on the field. Go back to the injury to Adalis Thomas and see if we can see what happened to him. All right, there he is there. He's rushing. There's where Vrabel gets the hit. Oh, Mike Vrabel, when he falls to the ground, falls into the left leg of Adalis Thomas. And you can see his knee and ankle really flex. More often than not in this game, you're hurt by someone else falling on your leg. Well, Davin Holly, a third year cornerback out of Cincinnati, will walk off the field. Training staffs, both these teams have had a, an active first half. Well, there's no secret to the story of this first half. Derek Anderson has been intercepted three times. And they've all been, you know, caroms. That, that one was because Vrabel hit his arm and he shoots a floater to Junior Seau that Seau almost could have fair caught. Looked more like a punt than a pass. And then the other two bounce off, one off of Dallas Thomas, one, one off of Asante Samuel. And during the last time out, Dan, you and I were just talking here, the Cleveland Browns have been able to move the football up and down the field. They had a very effective drive going up to that point. They had to go to the air. They weren't going to run it all the way to the end zone with two minutes left in the half. Brady on first and goal. Fakes to Sammy Morris. Has time. Throws to the far side. Then Watson walks into the end zone. Too easy. Well, it's a check down, a check down, and then he finds Watson. But again, Tom Brady might as well be in the old Barker lounger sitting back there. I mean, this is just, it's just too easy. Without pressure, it's just too easy. 
Romeo Cronell somehow has to challenge his front seven that if we're not going to pressure Tom Brady, we're going to get humiliated and run out of this stadium. 14 New England points off three turnovers. The extra point is good. And it's a 20 to nothing Patriots lead. Let's watch this. Does Tom Brady have any time? Okay, I'll just come over here. And the reality is, he'd have had two or three more seconds. There was nobody even close. So lack of pressure. Watson stays in the block. Even puts a shoulder on a guy. By that time, the defense loses track of him. Doesn't count him as a receiver. And Tom goes, wow. So now, that was easy. Romeo Cornell and his coaches huddle in the locker room. And maybe they decide they've got to blitz Tom Brady a little more, which is music to Randy Moss's ears. Yes, it is. Because that'll mean single coverage and maybe some big plays. And and Romeo knows that if he wants to pressure Tom Brady, where he wants to do it is when Brady's under center. You want to pressure Brady when he's under center. When he's in the shotgun, he can see everything and pressure, well, that's, that's just playing into his hands. The Browns, in case you can't tell by the way Greg and I are talking, are in a sticky wicket. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, where fourth art by pass rush. A minute and one second to play here in the first half. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and say that the glass is more than half full for New England. Their offensive line has played a stellar half. This is Josh Cruz from the six. Oof, uh -oh. hit hard as he crossed the 20 to the 23-yard line. Pierre Woods, second-year linebacker out of Michigan with that lick. And number 24 down on the field is Mel Mitchell, or rather, yeah, Mel Mitchell. Wow, we have seen some injuries here in the first half of this game. But listen to this hit on Cribs as he returns this kickoff. Wow, that is a big time stick by Pierre Woods. A teammate of Braylon Edwards at Michigan. <laughs> That's what you got to do. First, you got to fight through the block. Someone's assigned to you, and then you have to take on the ball carrier. When you're on that kickoff That's team, you really want to play football, don't you? Hey, when you're a second-year player, that's it. Dallas Thomas's ankle injury now makes him a questionable return. That's complete across the 40 to Braylon Edwards. 50 seconds and counting. Yeah, you could see uh, his knee and his ankle both flexed when Vrabel fell on it. You just hope it's not that high ankle sprain. Anderson trying to get something on the board before time expires here in the first half. On the blitz, and he goes down. That's Teddy Bruschi. Bruschi with his first sack of the season. Well, Teddy Bruschi kind of fakes. <laughs> you notice how he leans away, acts like he's going to run out, maybe cover the flat. And then after that lean, he comes in on the blitz, and nobody's assigned to block him. Derek Anderson, first of all, he had time to set and plant and go. If he was on a rhythm pass, nobody open. Bam, down he goes. Cleveland timeout now with 18 seconds to play, and Derek Anderson. Well, that one, that left a mark. And look at this, Brady Quinn has his helmet on. Derek Anderson just took a huge shot from Bruschi. And he's coming out. And Brady Quinn about to take the field. Or is he? A little catch with Derek Anderson here on the side. Well, if, if wait a minute, now Derek Anderson. I've never seen a guy come out and then go play catch. He's got to be going back in. He's just talking to the coaching staff.
Yeah, Derek Anderson is staying in. There's no way that a guy who's coming out of the game plays catch with the guy who's replacing him. Got to be a little something, a little. Maybe you got to have a little something more wrong than that. If you're good enough to play, to play catch, you're yes. good enough to play. I think so. One timeout remaining for Cleveland. A little movement. That's all. Start on the rookie Joe. Thomas. All start. Seventy-three. Offense. Man, Five yard penalty. I have done Still that before. Down. That's not a quiver. That's not a twitch. That's a full blown two yard set. And then you realize you are the only, only one. one there. <laughs> That's where you look for that trap door where you'd like to just jump down it and go hide somewhere. So now the Browns are just going to run out the clock for the rest of this half. Anderson takes a knee on second and 25. And they're going to try to regroup in the locker room and try to figure out what to do. That's the end of the half. 20 to nothing, New England. Back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message. And a word from your local station. They can move the football up and down the field. The Cleveland Browns are one timeout away from being a three and one football team coming into this game. So the Browns are much improved. They, they just can't make mistakes. They're not good enough to make those mistakes and survive. Gostowski kicks this ball out of bounds on the near side. Boy, and he helps them out. They'll start out at the 40 yard line. Ball will be placed 30 yards from the spot of the kick. First down at the 40. So back comes Derek Anderson. And he's delighted as can be to get to start at his own 40-yard line. Junior say out with a couple of picks today. Anderson, meanwhile, 7 out of 14 for 82 yards and three interceptions. No Jamal Lewis as yet. Jason Wright starts the second half in the backfield. Takes the handoff and gets a yard, maybe two. Against Will Fork with the stop. Number and how, about, how about that for the Patriots? Adelis Thomas is back on the field. When you go off the field and you have an arm off over two members of the training staff, and it hurts that badly to walk off the field, and you're out there that you're out there to start the second half. I'm sure a lot of people in New England right now are going, yeah, baby. Adelis was behind the scheme earlier in the week, brought in a bunch of T-shirts that were made up. A lot of. Uh, a lot of joking about uh, a dish that Bill Belichick serves up. Anderson, deep drop, on the move. Going to keep it and head for the sidelines and run out of bounds. These t-shirts were made up and on the front <laughs> it said I eat it, but the back is the key. Yes, humble pie. Bill Belichick is just one of those coaches that no matter the margin of victory, no matter what their record is, He's going to give you a healthy dose of it. Belichick's T-shirt said, I serve it. Yeah, and he does. Gleefully, if that word has ever been used with Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> Third and seven for Anderson and the Browns. <laughs> On a big rush, and the pass is incomplete. Roosevelt Colvin covering Jason Wright out of the backfield and on comes Scott Player. And let's be realistic. This is one of the worst looks of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a rule that you must wear a face mask. But you'd think that you'd like to have a face mask that would offer some protection. Maybe he thinks they'll bounce off his mustache. Tell you what, he gets off a heck of a kick. Wes Welker is going to let it fly, hits the goal line, and bounces into the end zone for the touchback. Well, he's a player. What do you expect? 13:38 <laughs> to play in the third quarter, and Brady goes to work from his own 20-yard line with a 20-point lead. Sammy Morris, and maybe a yard or so. How have those big guns done today? Well, look at that first half by Tom Brady. Only five incompletion. Keep in mind, two of those were drops. Randy Moss pretty much held in check with only a pair of receptions, but again, 18-yard average. But Dante Stallworth got to come out and play today with a touchdown and four receptions, and he dropped what might have been another touchdown. Tom Brady served one up to him, and uh, he just took his eye off of it and dropped it. He could have had a much bigger half than he had. Second and eight now. 
Brady with time, throws and caught by number 81, Randy Moss. No, 84, Ben Watson on the far side of the field. So many options. So many people that Tom Brady is comfortable in this passing offense. Of course, Benjamin Watson, their first round pick back in 04, he's been with Brady through the good times, some of the lean times, and I'm talking from a receiving standpoint the last couple of years. And on first down, end around, Watson this time, the tight end, midfield to the 45-yard line, and that's another New England first down. Well, this is what Tom Brady has had going for him today. Sammy Morris has been running the football hard, as always, underneath. Wes Welker, and now Kevin Falk. Again, moving the chains. When you want to work the sidelines and go vertical, you've got Randy Moss and Dante Stallworth. Again, Tom Brady, very, very liberal with who gets to play. Finally, after everybody else, Benjamin Watson gets to take a trip around the schoolyard. They all love Tom Terrific. Now from the 45, Brady. And that pass is incomplete. Jeez, and for the first time, Tom had to actually throw the ball before he wanted to. And take a look at that winning percentage. Those are the active quarterbacks in the NFL for at least two years. That's 32 starts, two full seasons. And Tom Brady with that 755 percentage. Roethlisberger, the only other quarterback over 70%. Oh, gaudy numbers. Here's Sammy Morris. And Morris to the 40, where it'll be about a third and five. Well, fans here are kind of spoiled, aren't they? They're used to seeing this stuff. And there's the guy who made the trip from the shores of Lake Erie. I think he expected to be smiling a lot today. Now from the shotgun on third and five, Brady's going to throw it. Oh, and he had Ben Watson wide open on the near side and didn't get him. Although, if you're a Cleveland Browns fan, why wouldn't you think that your team could upset the Patriots today on a weekend where Stanford could beat Southern Cal? Not happy. Brady now 14 out of 21. And you know, 66% just doesn't cut it in the Tom Brady world. The kick. The bounce. Into the end zone. 11 minutes on the nose to play in the third quarter. And the Patriots still in charge. Welcome back to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, everyone. Along with Dan Deerdorf, I'm Greg Gumbel. 11 minutes to play here in the third quarter, and Derek Anderson got to find a way to get something going offensively against New England. Got to get Kellen Winslow involved in this game. His tight end who came into the game with 20 receptions doesn't have any. Anderson under pressure. Now flips it out to Jason Wright. And Wright across the 30 and out of bounds, and there's a penalty marker. Well, Coleman will tell us who and why. Face mask, 27, defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Actually, First he down. told us why and then who. <laughs> Ellis Hobbs, the cornerback. The incidental face mask. Rather than grabbing and holding on, it... Well, he kind of held Although on. Although he does <laughs> grab and hold on. Ah, that's a 15-yard uh, variety to latch on and hold on for that long. Hobbs fortunate that was only the, the five yarder. Easily could have been the 15. So now first down from their own 37. Play fake. Anderson with time. Running out of time now and throws it away. What he ran out of was an open receiver. Two guys were running with Kellen Winslow and two guys were downfield with Braylon Edwards. Again, things 
are hard to come by against this Patriots defense. They don't give you any help. Second and ten. Anderson, this time right on the nose to Kellen Winslow for his first catch of the day. You have got to have Kellen Winslow being part of the offense. This time he just runs up, does a nice corner, and heads right for the sideline against this New England zone. Let's check out Joe Thomas blocking on the other side. And a nice job by Jason Wright as well of picking up the corner blitz. Joe Thomas said he yeah. tried to talk to everybody about the NFL experience. Didn't he strike you as a really confident young man? Absolutely. Far side of the field. There's another completion to the 30-yard line. This time, Tim Carter on the receiving end. Tim Carter getting some playing time, some extra playing time with the injury in the first half to Joe Juravicious. Let's watch Joe Thomas again. There he is. It's good, solid pass protection working against Jarvis Green, who might be the best pass rusher of the of the down lineman for the Patriots. Penalty markers fly as the give is to Jason Wright. And Wright still on his feet to the 25. And now let's check the flag and see what that's all about. Illegal shift, two men moving and not resetting. Five yard penalty, offense. Just as the Browns get something going, it's back up. But it's Braylon Edwards and, and Kellen Winslow. These are the two home run threats on this offense. Somehow Derek Anderson has got to find a way. Scheme wise or just one on one of breaking one of these guys loose. First and 15. This time the quick pass to Braylon Edwards. And Edwards inside the 25 to about the 23 to New York. James Brown. Take it away, James. Greg and Dan, right after the Giants score, take a look at how New England takes the air out of their sails on his kickoff return from the two. Leon Washington of the Jets split straight up the middle, slick moves, 98 yards of pay dirt. His second 98 yard return for a score this season. By 10, the Jets are up. Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff. Yeah, JB, I think that Leon Washington, yeah. once he takes it at the two, you're dead. I believe we were there for that other 98 yards. We were. Second and three now for Anderson. Going to give it to Jason Wright. And Wright is going to be stacked up at the 24. One of the things, was there. One Seau of, was there. One of the things this New England defense does really well is you'll see running backs a lot of times go to cut back. But these guys honor their lanes, honor their gap responsibilities so well. A lot of times a guy makes a cutback, expects to find a crease. What he finds is a guy with a silver helmet waiting to put it to him. It's, it's all good when you're up by 20. Big third and five here for Derek Anderson. This side, in and out of the hands of Winslow. A good blitz pickup up front by his offensive line. Ball just that is it overthrown? Is it is it out of the reach of Winslow? It initially it looks like he could have caught that easily. I think you have to catch that ball. Well, it, it sure looked like it was there. At least lay out for it. Phil Dawson for 42 yards out. And that's a season long for Dawson as the Browns hit the scoreboard with 7.32 to play in the third. Wes Welker, number 83, at the goal line for the kick from Phil Dawson. Welker from a yard deep to the 20. 25, still on his feet, and out in the 30-yard line. Here was Cleveland's attempt to try to find the end zone. 
Anderson and Winslow. Another incomplete. Just under seven and a half to play in the third quarter here in Foxborough. New England with a 20 to three lead and the ball at their own 33 yard line. Sammy Morris. He has turned in a pretty tough day today. Well, nowhere to, nowhere to go right there. The rookie Eric Wright just sitting there waiting for him, and an awfully good form tackle by Wright. You know, we were joking with Wes Welker. You know, he had a good day against the Pats. They go out and acquire him. Sammy Morris had a good day against the Pats. They go out and get him. It, it's so simple. It seems logical, does it not? Of course, Wes Welker. He brings so many things to the table. Slot receivers in this league are hard to find. Factor in the the part that he's such a good return man, and it's icing on the cake. On second and ten, that pass across the 35 to the 37, and Sammy Morris on the receiving end once again. As we come up on six and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter, Jason Campbell having himself a pretty good day today. And he certainly has. Roethlisberger, I see, has a touchdown pass. Ronnie Brown tickling 100 there with 99. Reese Jones drew. 78 yards on only six carries. And we got to look at Larry Fitzgerald last week in that win over the Steelers. Third and six now for Brady. That pass disconnected with Welker. And that was a pretty ugly drive by the Patriots. Now Brady that, walking off the field and not very happy no, at all. No, that was unattractive. That was a first down run that had absolutely no chance of going anywhere. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Total miscommunication there between Brady and Welker. And a moderate completion in the middle. That, not much. Well, the Browns could use some decent field position courtesy of Josh Cribbs who's back at his own 20 yard line. They could use one run back for a touchdown is what they could do. And that's not the best kick in the world off the left foot of Chris Hansen. Anderson will have decent field position when we come back. They have a vision for a, a center here, Patriot Place, that will service all of New England. Going to put in a Hall of Fame for the Patriots. Uh, 365 day multi use facility here that's going to be a real jewel. Derek Anderson going to throw on first down, and he's not going to get it away. Teddy Bruschi gets him down at the 30 yard line. Well, this is Derek Anderson is going down because he can't find anybody open. Credit the credit the back seven for the Patriots. They are just smothering the Cleveland receivers. And then what little time he has, and then it's eaten up, and here comes Teddy Bruschi again. Although that was a gentle sack compared to the one Bruschi put on him in the first half. Loss of six, second and 16. This time a quick drop and a quick pass and a quick incompletion. Tim Carter on the far side. Well, that ball thrown way behind Carter. It'll be third and 16. This is one of those deals right now. Derek Anderson unsure whether there are seven Patriots coming after him. Or they could rush two people and drop nine. <laughs> Anderson just two out of seven on third down conversions. Josh Cribbs is in as a wide receiver for Cleveland. Anderson over the middle incomplete penalty marker slot. Kellen Winslow has a complaint. Personal foul grasping the face mask 37 defense 15 yard penalty automatic first Harrison. down. Rodney Harrison is locked up. Oh, you see his foot. Oh. His foot slipped out from underneath him, and then he just grabbed and yanked the face mask of Kellen Winslow. And that's a giant step forward for the Cleveland Browns. They're up now to their own 46. Uh, I'm assuming uh, that that was some sort of reaction to his foot sliding out, and he's going down. And you know what? 
not that bad a penalty. Certainly better than letting Winslow run right down the middle of the field all by himself. That might have been a Cleveland touchdown. Instead, it's a first down. Anderson for Jason Wright out of the backfield. Ducks inside, and they're all told that's about a three-yard pickup before Randall Gay makes the stop. Well, a good open field tackle by Gay. This is a New England secondary that is really deep. Right. See, look at that. Look how he stayed square, didn't overcommit, and then able to react back to the inside move. There is Robert Kraft, chairman and CEO of the Patriots. Son Jonathan on one side, wife Myra to the other. Anderson on second and seven, down the middle. Incomplete. And that time, Kellen Winslow hit hard by Rodney Harrison, and that was a Rodney Harrison hit. Well, this is a simple little fake to the outside, then back into the seam, and Rodney Harrison, <laughs> that's what it's saying. But you notice how he's leading with the shoulder and not the head. That's the way a safety is supposed to come in. He didn't launch himself into a missile. He wasn't trying to spear Winslow, but he was trying to hit him hard. Third and seven. And here come the Patriots. Quick pass incomplete off the hand of Braylon Edwards. And that Cleveland offense is looking a little frustrated right now. Wes Welker back at his own 10. Player puts it up high. And it will fall inside the five and into the end zone for the touchback. We're talking about that construction going on next door. Well, and the Patriots really, this is a, a new interactive Hall of Fame that they're talking about to celebrate their history, their Super Bowls, going all the way back to Gino Capaletti and some of the illustrious Patriots who came before this current crop. And uh, the only thing you know for sure that uh, the Kraft family, when they are when they're drawing this up, no expense was spared. This this will be spectacular. I'm, I'm anxious to see it like everyone else is up here. But kind of like what they did with Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Right. Turning it into a year-round destination. Brady on first down over the middle. Watson across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Dequell Jackson makes the stop. There's a hotel going up right next door here. Yeah, and I'm will be tenants. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> be nice, just walk over here on the morning of the game. It was a pretty lethargic three and out last time for the Patriots offensively, and I'm assuming that they heard about it on the sideline. Brady on second and three from the shotgun sideline, incomplete. Sammy Morris was down the sideline. You know, the fact that the stadium is right across the street reminds me of the story Bill Belichick was telling us yesterday about how one of his players one time in St. Louis, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so in St. Louis, how when he was an assistant coach for the Giants. You Seriously, now this hotel from Bush Stadium in St. Louis couldn't have been more than 50 yards. And he had a guy show up late. In fact, he missed pregame warm-ups. Because he, he, he couldn't lost. find the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't find yeah. the stadium. Yeah, if you're going to pull that uh, excuse, I'd use it someplace differently than that. On third and three, Sammy Morris with the pitch left side across the 30, across the 35, and a first down for New England. And a penalty marker down. Well, what a block at the point of attack. Are they going to say this was an illegal crackback? A hold. Holding, 18, offense, 10-yard penalty. Still third down. And another injured Brown on the field. It's Brodney Poole, the safety. Just 
So he's being looked at at about the 37. Romeo Cornell knew he had his hands full coming in here. We'll take a timeout. Let's go to JB in New York. James. All right, Greg, you certainly know the futility of the Lions winning in Washington where they're 0-20. Take a look here. Andre Carter, the skin, sacking John Kittenham for the safety. Lions now trail by 13 late in the third. Back to Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff. James Brown, thank you much. That's a major losing streak there when you're 0-20. <laughs> That's, there's... You know, you can only argue so much. Well, that was those guys. You know, this is we're we're the new group. Twenty spans a lot of years. Yeah, it sure does. Number twenty, Mike Adams, has come on for Brodney Poole, who walked off the field. Brady looking now at a third and eight, and needs the thirty-yard line for a first down. Far side of the field for Moss. Oh, did he catch that? No, but he came awfully close. Well, he came close and close only because of the outstanding coverage of that kid there Eric Wright the rookie corner this was good coverage he is all over Randy Moss and look how he's contesting the pattern he's playing Moss not the football he did not know where the football was until he saw the reaction of Moss going up and getting it. this kick once again off to the right side of the field off the foot of Chris Hansen and pretty good field position once again for the Cleveland Browns. A reminder for you tomorrow here on CBS what does it take to melt the heart of TV's most popular bachelor. Find out an all new two and a half men tomorrow at 9 8 central time here on CBS. Boy in the crowd getting after Hansen a little bit. Free agent this year signing with the club and I think the uh, crowd here at Gillette Stadium telling him don't buy any frozen crab cakes if you keep that up. Well last week Bill Belichick got after his guys and he said he thought they quote left some things out there. It'd be interesting to see what he'd say about this game. Well he's going to have a lot to say about the third quarter. He can't be happy so far. This is Jason Wright and not much there for Wright out to the 47 yard line. Ty Warren Vince Wilfork on the stop. I mean the defense came out of the locker room and they've played pretty well here in the second half. Not a real noticeable drop off there but offensively they haven't done a thing. Two and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Anderson has not been able to get much of a rhythm going with any of his receivers. Out of the flat here to Steve Hyden. And Hyden works his way to midfield. And it'll be a third and five. Have you noticed, have you noticed how few broken tackles there are against this Patriots defense? You know, you, the guys in this league are so good, they force you in the missing tackles but missed tackles are something that you just don't see all that often often against this New England defense as good a tackling group as you will find anywhere in football Cleveland two out of eight on third down not a good recipe for winning football games Anderson on the move trying to get to the first down marker and he does it'll be a first down by about a yard and a half and not exactly fleet of foot is Derek Anderson, but he was opportunistic there getting around the corner. You know, this is, you know, this is a team that just hasn't done a whole lot, but you know, if they can somehow, if they could somehow find the end zone and make this a 10 point game, all of a sudden they're in it. Anybody's in a game when you're only down by 10 points. Willie McGinnis told us yesterday yeah. our best defense will be our offense this week quick drop quick pass that's to Winslow and Winslow very close to a first down while we check that let's check with JB in New York hey Greg and Dan take a look here at Pittsburgh's Najee Davenport his second touchdown of the game that a five yarder 
capping a 13 play 85 yard drive spanking Seattle 21 nothing Bill Cowher said watch the game here Greg Gumbel Dan Deardorff. Yeah those Steelers are those Seahawks saying thanks a lot Arizona yeah. for uh, Whoa. <laughs> the lighting of fire you think that you know they Mike Tomlin they had a wild week there. This is Jason Wright left side cuts it back in inside the 30 to about the 27 yard line where Junior Seau is waiting for him. And 15 seconds winds us down to the end of the third quarter and we'll pick it up there. We've come to the end of three with our score. 20 to three New England back to Foxborough after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. 15 minutes to play here in Foxborough. It's how we got to this 20 to three New England advantage. Tom Brady with a couple of touchdown passes. One to Watson, one to Stallworth. Randy Moss has not been big on the receiving end, but out there blocking, and the Pats defense has come up with three interceptions of Derek Anderson, two by Junior Seau. Anderson, the screen. This is right, right. To the 20, just short of the 20. Brought down by Ty Warren. Boy, for a minute when I saw that screen set up, I thought the Browns had a chance to break a big play. They had guys out front, but only takes one guy to disrupt the screen, and that time Ty Warren did just that. Now Josh Cribbs onto the field. Romeo Cornell telling us that Josh Cribbs is learning how to be a good receiver. Keep in mind this guy was a quarterback in college. He's learning it. He's not there yet. But he's got a shot to be a good quality receiver in this league. Anderson down the sideline. It is all oh, diving catch inside the five and a touchdown to Tim Carter. And all of a sudden, here we are now because of that lackadaisical third quarter by the New England offense. All of a sudden, we've got our chance to have a 10 point game for Cleveland. 21 yard pass play Carter with the diving catch and then rolls across the goal line into the end zone for the touchdown. Well Randall Gay lost his footing and ended up thrown on the field. Tim Carter sixth year receiver out of Auburn a cousin of Gary Sheffield and Dwight Gooden. Dawson to add the extra point. And it is good. 14 10 to play in the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. Patriots lead is down to 10. Ellis Hobbs, you have to think he might be hurting a little bit because he was out there to return the kick and now is just replaced by Wes Welker. Bill, as deep man. Bill Belichick talked to him when he came off uh, on the sideline. Hobbs looked at dejected. He wanted to return this kick. This is a short kick. And Pierre Woods brings it in at about the 27 or 28 yard line. Tom Brady. That's the third quarter there on the bottom under second half. Three of eight for 33 total yards. They had three possessions in the third quarter. They punted on all three for 56 total yards. So the, uh, the New England offense, I guess courtesy of the Cleveland defense, has has uh, gone into snooze Back mode. Here. And well, when last we saw Tom Brady, he walked off the field and was steaming at the performance of the offense. Sammy Morris in the backfield behind him. Remember the Patriots going without the services of Lawrence Maroney today. You think we start to see some enthusiasm here out of the Browns. They've got to realize that they're uh, they're within striking distance here. They're one break away from really having some fun. Pass to the outside. That's complete to Morris. Rag down at the 33. Almost the 34 by DeQuell Jackson. That's a pickup of about five. It'll be second and five. Boy, a good tackle by the by the young Cleveland linebacker. You know the Brownies last year drafted three linebackers. And all three of them start Cameron Wimbley and Dequell Jackson and Leon Williams with a first, a second, and a fourth pick, respectively. That, 
That, that, that's a good year when you can get three starters like that. Morris, left side, running room 40, 45, across the 45 to about the 47 and a first down. JB in New York, what you got? Hey, Greg and Dan, it was 17-7 Jets at the half, but the Giants are coming back. Eli Manning, better second half. Hooking up here with Jeremy Shockey, 13 yards to pay dirt. It is now 24-21 Jets just underway in the fourth. Back to Greg and Dan. All right, JB. JB keeping us updated on the Battle of New Jersey. I got you. I'm going up. First down now. Patriots, their own 47-yard line. Brady, far side. Complete stalwart. Or make it Jabbar Gaffney. Meanwhile, Jacksonville and what's going on with them? Hey, Greg and Dan, what's happening? David Garrard hooking up here with Dennis Northcutt, a three-yard strike, capping a nine-play, 81-yard drive. Chiefs have never been shut out, or take that, have not been shut out at home since 94. They're being blanked right now, Greg and Dan. All right, James, thank you. Look at the AFC South. Let's go back. Jacksonville, one of those teams that would not like to just let the Colts run away with it. Second and four for Brady. Easier said than done. Yeah. Deep drop this time. Brady throws this side. That's complete to Randy Moss. Inside the 40-yard line and another New England first down. And another continuing educational experience for Eric Wright, the rookie corner. Working against Randy Moss. You've got to give Moss a cushion when he, watch this, I, there's no way you don't turn and run and respect that speed. When he breaks for the sideline, all you can do is close. Randy Moss's first reception since the first quarter. He has three catches on the day for 46 yards. Don't feel bad out there, kid. Every corner in the league gives Randy Moss cushion. Brady on the move, throws it away. Cameron Wimbley in hot pursuit. Tom has such awareness, even being flushed like that. And did you notice how under control he was? It was nothing franting about it. No, everything in economy of motion. He's really just kind of cruising toward the sidelines and chucks it away. Brady now 19 of 30 for 203 yards. And second and 10. Sammy Morris, right side, cuts it inside to the 31. You know, Greg, I was thinking, if, if you really love good football, what a great time to be an NFL fan right now from the quarterback position. Yeah, we're watching Brett Favre break the all-time passing record, you know, Dan Marino's record for touchdown passes. We've got Tom Brady playing the game at the level he is here in New England. Peyton Manning and Indianapolis. Just between those three. There are so many other good quarterbacks, but these three guys, these are three historic figures in this game 20, 30 years from now. Looking back, you're going to be able to say, man, I watched these guys play, and I, I saw them in their prime. And a bunch of young guns poised to take their places, too. That's exactly right. Brady, quick pass, this side. That's Welker, and Welker, Kent, stays on his feet and looks for the first down. What a job by Wes Welker. And Lee Bodden can't believe it. <laughs> Wes Welker is 5-9 on a really, really good day. We have another player down and injured. That's Eric Wright, the rookie cornerback out of UNLV. I mean, Lee Bodden put a big hit on Wes Welker, the initial attempt to tackle him. And then Eric Wright came in second. Well, we're going to take a time out here while they check out Eric Wright. 10.33 to play in the fourth. Wes Welker came up about half a foot, maybe not even that much, shy of a first down. So on fourth and inches, Eric Wright with a big hit. Walked off the field under his own power. Mike Vrabel is on the field. He'll play the tight end position. This is one part of their short yardage package. Go, 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 go. 
Morris and Heath Evans in the backfield on fourth and inches. Sammy Morris, left side, got the first down, and then some inside the 25 to about the 24. Oh, Sammy's a little upset with himself. He jumps over the line. He thinks he's going to get hit, and he doesn't. Watch this hole. He follows Evans right up in there, but he actually fell down on his own. If he could have maintained his feet. He could, would have gotten some more yardage. He just... He just came down awkwardly on that right leg. Ninth play of this drive. First down from their own 25. Brady. Oh, Ben Watson alone for the touchdown. Watson's second touchdown catch of the day. Well, Ben Watson has a lot of wide receiver capabilities himself. He's more receiver than blocker. And Tom Brady found him with a one-on-one -on -one against the safety. I think Mike Adams is the safety that has the coverage. You see, he's just there in a chase position. I couldn't tell, was that Adams or Sean Jones? Might have been Sean Jones. But he spotlights, finds a single coverage. And then it's tough to run stride for stride with Benjamin Watson. Ben Watson on the receiving end. Tom Brady, a little bit more of what he was looking for earlier. 27-10 pass. New England scores here. Didn't score in the third quarter, snapping a streak of 37 consecutive quarters in which they scored. They start a new one on the 25-yard touchdown pass from Tom Brady to Ben Watson. Josh Cribbs from the six. To the 20, 30, and across the 35-yard line and a nice return. Boy, nice pictures from up above today, courtesy of the MetLife blimp. Snoopy One providing the aerial coverage. Look for the MetLife blimps as team A team up with CBS for more coverage this fall. Well, that last touchdown kind of had a cumulative effect of bringing the crowd rising to its feet and heading for the exit. <laughs> I think they feel comfortable. Five consecutive games. Tom Brady has started the season with three touchdown passes in each of the five. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Derek Anderson. Far side of the field. And that is Whoa. caught on the far side by Braylon Edwards. How about that little one-handed snatch there by Braylon Edwards? Looked like he got that with nothing but the left hand. Check this out. Hello. Nice. That's pretty good. Is Belichick, he's going to challenge that. Yes, he is. <laughs> Oh, New England Bill. is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed kick. You know, fans like it. The fans aren't going to like the end result. This is a pretty good catch. Well, it sure looked like he had control of the football. Pulls it in. He holds it. This is a much more definitive look right here. Walt Pullman will take a look. We'll take a timeout. Oh, he controls that all the way. And by FedEx. Go air. Go ground. Ruling on go the field football. stands. New England will be charged with their first timeout. Welcome back to Foxborough. Walt Coleman agrees that it was a legitimate catch. And so the Patriots lose a timeout in the challenge. Well, it happened right in front of Bill Belichick. And he must have thought he saw something that our cameras and the officiating crew did not. So it's a first down now. Cleveland at their own 49-yard line. Raylan Edwards, five catches for 74. Well, that was a beautiful effort by Edwards. Talk about laying out for a ball. And once again, the Browns trying to get something going. Still time on the clock. Just under nine and a half to play. Anderson down the middle. 
Jackson just plain old missed Braylon Edwards. Second and ten. And again, that's you know you look at the you look at the difference in these two passing games and it, Derek Anderson in his seventh start in the NFL. It's really unfair to compare him to what's going on with that guy right there. Three Super Bowl rings, MB, MVPs. He's got absolutely, he's absolutely at the peak of his football playing abilities. And Derek Anderson just really getting started. Anderson on the run. Flips it out to the far side to Josh Cribbs. And Cribbs has a first down at the 40. That was pretty slick. <laughs> that was a little sandlot football by Anderson. Innovative. <laughs> Cribs does a reverse and goes the other way. And it really, it, it's, I don't know if that's setting up a play down the road, but Cribs smartly stayed alive and circled all the way around to get back into it. First down at the New England 40. Here comes the blitz. Anderson eludes Seau and throws it away. Boy, Anderson was looking left, turned right, and there was Junior Seau in his face. The younger you are, the more they'll come after you. There's no mercy in the NFL for a young quarterback. Look at that, 13 hurries. For Derek Anderson. Hard for a young quarterback Whoops. to make a completion being hurried. It's hard enough for a veteran who knows what he's doing. And here they come again. Yeah. And Anderson goes down. Vince Wilfork, the first one through. Third sack of Anderson today. Well, Vince, all pass protection starts inside out. You got to block the guard center gap first. You can't turn the guy loose. It looked like the responsibility for picking him up was Jason Wright, the running back. And he ran right by him. But, well, I don't know how you expect Jason Wright to block Vince Wolfert. That, that's just, Derek Anderson had to go, well, thanks for nothing. It's one of those situations where even if he had gotten the block, it would have been the same thing. It would have been result. the same thing. It's just that, that Jason Wright would have been stuck to the front of Vince Wolfork like a bug on a windshield. And with the play clock winding down, Cleveland forced to take a timeout with 8.04 to play here in the fourth quarter. It's been a tough day for the young quarterback out of Oregon State. Well, this one gets tipped right here by Asante Samuel. Bounces up in the air right into the hands of Junior Seah. This one gets tipped by Dallas Thomas. This time, though, to Asante Samuel. These guys are just taking turns. And the third one, it's a pass rush by Mike Vrabel. He, def he hits his arm, a floater right to Junior Seau. And those are the three picks for Derek Anderson. You can't, you can't come into this stadium. You can't go into anybody's stadium and expect to throw three picks and survive the day. But least of all, at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Willie McGinnis was telling us it's just been a learning process for this Cleveland team and they still have to learn that sometimes games are won Monday through Friday not just on Sunday that's a lesson he learned where here third and 20 Anderson trying to escape trouble on the move caught from behind lost the football that's a loose ball Oh, are they going to rule it? Is Walt Coleman saying that was a forward pass? That, or the tuck rule? <laughs> Here's Walt. We have an incomplete pass. Wow. Adalis Thomas had a shot at Derek Anderson, and Anderson got away from him. And then from behind... Did, well, he kind of flipped it underhanded. Eugene Wilson. I, I can see what Walt Coleman saw. And on fourth down, 
before there's any kind of a review happening. Wes Welker on the receiving end of the kick from his own seven. Left sideline, up the sideline, and out of bounds. We have a penalty marker down at about the 15-yard line. And they're still discussing the penalty. During the kick, illegal block in the back, 31, return team, half the distance of the goal, first down. Well, as good a day as it's been, or as bad a day as it's been for Derek Anderson, Brady's had a pretty good day. The other side had three picks. This side has three touchdowns. The first to Dante Stallworth, who does a wonderful job of breaking tackles and heading to the end zone. And then out in the flat, he finds Benjamin Watson, who's wide open. And then again, this time, straight down the seam, single coverage with a safety. Watson again. So after not being heard from in the early parts of the game, Benjamin Watson comes on strong with a pair of touchdown receptions from Tom. Terrific. See, it's the way he spreads the ball around. He really. I mean, this guy checks from one to another to another. He came, this, came into this game leading the NFL in touchdown passes with 13. He's added three more today. And without without adding to the interception total, that's Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator, who's a whopping one year older than Tom Brady. <laughs> the foul occurred during the return. So we will go half the distance from the 14th from the dead ball spot. First so down. We're going to relocate the line of scrimmage. I'm sure all you all Ohio fans back there following your brownies know that Josh McDaniels is from Canton, Ohio. Played for his dad at Canton McKinley. His dad's the coach now at Jackson High School, which is right next door to Canton, Jackson Township, right there in Maslin. A lot of Buckeye roots there in the McDaniels family. Keith Evans and Kyle Eckel are in the backfield. And this is Eckel. First year back out of the Naval Academy. As the Patriots look to take a little time off the clock and take a look at what New England is looking at one week from now. Well, you see what we have highlighted on there. It became fashionable for people to talk about an undefeated season. Look, a trip to Dallas next week. November the 4th, they have to go to Indianapolis. They still have to play Pittsburgh at home. And let's not talk, how about that trip to Baltimore? Going to Baltimore on December the 3rd. If this ends up being an undefeated team, like John Houseman used to say, they will have earned it. Oh, out of the backfield, Heath Evans was wide open and it was off his fingertips. Meanwhile, those Dallas Cowboys are looking fairly potent these days. Well, I, I think you got to say right now that the Patriots are the best team in the AFC and the Cowboys are the best team in the NFC. Tony Romo is just playing flawless football. Barber's running strong. Their defense, Wade Phillips, has done, a, I think, a superlative job with Dallas. And take a look at what they're doing over there. First in points, offense, third in defense. This is as good a regular season matchup as you could possibly make up. Third and eight. Just got the snap off in time. Brady for Randy Moss incomplete. And Brady a little upset about an on call. This hasn't been the happiest we've ever seen Tom Brady. I'm, you know, three touchdown passes, no interceptions. Yes, on the surface, that's a really good day. But they've had a lot of three and outs today. They've had a lot of drives that haven't haven't come close to, you know, fulfilling their expectations. 34 pass attempts today for Brady in the season high. Hanson out of the end zone. Cribs to the 40. Back to the 35. And a nice return from Cribs. Eric Alexander with the stop. 6.44 to play here in the fourth. Check out the new NFL.com where you can see exclusive video highlights from all of today's games for stats, exclusive video, and much more. Go to the new NFL.com. 
you know, let's face it, this is a team that's not used to not scoring in the 30s. Their four wins, they score 38, 38, 38, and 34. So this stuck in the 20s is not uh, not making anybody in Patriot Nation very happy. So Anderson gets to start from the New England 35 and under the gun again and throws and that's complete. This is Jason Wright out of the backfield inside the 15 yard line and a first down for Cleveland. Adalis Thomas made the stop after a 21 yard pickup. Bill Belichick right now is thinking to himself this game is so far from being over. I know these are the Browns and these are the Patriots and you think well this is just some sort of a cakewalk. Well guess what the guys in the uh, brown helmets the orange helmets, they're on scholarship too. Or in, more, <laughs> in more modern day lingo he would say we are so not home free. Yeah, we are so not home free is right. Anderson under the gun throws touchdown. Kellen Winslow and what a job by Derek Anderson. Big strong son of a gun having words with Randy having words with Rodney Harrison rather on the way off the field. He and Harrison walked off jawing at each other. Rodney just a millisecond away from getting to Anderson. He really gets he really gets it put on him by Rodney right there. And I think but, probably objects to the extra shove at the end of the day. But he'll take the touchdown pass and Dawson with the extra point is good. Just under six minutes to play. And once again, New England lead is down to 10. Winslow pulling it in at the goal line. Drew Brees, 250-yard day throwing the football. Yeah, but zero touchdowns and a pair of yeah. interceptions. Jason Campbell again with uh, two and no interceptions. Ronnie Brown ended up over 100 yards with 114. Fast Willie turns in a, a deuce and uh, 100. Larry Fitzgerald, seven receptions. Plexico Burris yeah, having really. a field day against the Jets. It's over a 20 yard average there for Plex. Here's Derek Anderson of the Cleveland Browns. And you know, much, much the way Bill Belichick forecast, he's had his ups and his downs today. So it's three. Three is the magic number for Brady, their touchdowns. For Anderson, they've been interceptions. So hard to overcome turnovers. It's a you get tired of saying it, but every time you see it illustrated as clearly as this. This is Welker. From about the 14. Dances his way across the 30 to about the 32 or the 33 yard line, and a nice return by the ex Miami Dolphin. Well, I was pretty effusive in my praise of the Patriots offensive line in the first half. This is time for them to earn a paycheck and grind out some first downs and eat away at this clock and not give the ball back to Cleveland. First downs and eat away at this clock and not give the ball back to Cleveland. If not at all, at least not for a while. Or else you'll be in retracting mode? No, but I just that's what's expected of them. I can't take away from the fact how well they played in the first half. But I'm sure that grinding out a few first downs pretty high on their wish list. Sammy Morris in the backfield. And Brady's gonna throw. Oh, look at Randy Moss. Open and he overthrew it. Oh, get this Brady guy out of there. <laughs> Oh, how frustrated do you think Tom is right now? Oh, man, they set that up. They set that up. He had exactly too much air under the ball. Oh, uh, that's on me. Mm -mm. That, Brady, Brady, that was gone. 230 passing yards today to 228 for Anderson. Well, you have days like this. Screen this side. Ben Watson 
and dock down to the 36 and here's a late flag flying in. They're going to get the Patriots for holding. Holding, 61, offense, 10 yard penalty. Still That's second down. The right guard, Stephen Neal. This offensive line undermanned again today. Starting center Dan Copen did not start. Russ Hochstein replaced him. Bill Belichick told us there was a possibility Stephen Neal wouldn't right. go today, but a game time decision had him in the lineup. Yeah, Neal's got a bad shoulder and has missed time, so it's uh, these guys have. Uh, but I'll say this about Hochstein: he's been filling in admirably here for the Patriots for years. Gotcha, center gotcha. guard, he can uh, he can pretty much do it all. Second and twenty now. Oh, look at how wide open Ben Watson is to midfield into Cleveland territory and inside the 45 yard line. Randy Moss, Randy Moss, Randy Moss. But the guy Tom Brady to has gone to in crunch time has been Benjamin Watson. Not Tom Brady's prettiest pass no, of his career. No, but you know, there are no style points there. Again, he found him singled up. And Leon Williams, the linebacker. Just not able to run with Benjamin Watson, who goes over the century mark with 107. That, that's just a matchup that Watson will win repeatedly. That's a career high for Watson. Brady going to throw this one away. All his receivers covered. It'll be second and 10. 438 to play here in the fourth. You know, Romeo Cornell did not come in here with blinders on, knew exactly what awaited him because oh, he spent eight quality years here. First as a defensive line coach and then as the coordinator. Well, he and the guy on the other sideline, both disciples of Bill Parcells. And, uh, yeah, cut from the same cloth. <laughs> on second and ten, they give this to Sammy Morris, tries the left side. And inside the 35 to about the 33 or the 32 yard line. You know, sometimes when an assistant goes out and gets another job, sometimes that relationship can be strained. In some cases, fractured. <laughs> That's not the case between Romeo Cronell and Bill Belichick. Still close. Yes, competitive. There's, you know, I don't think they got beforehand and got together beforehand and cried on each other's shoulders. But a lot of mutual respect between the two. First down now as the Patriots continue to eat away at the clock down to 3.55 to play. Sammy Morris again. As Morris approaches a 100-yard rushing on the day, he's down just inside the 25. Greg, remember when we talked to Bill Belichick about, about the Browns and Romeo, and, you know, isn't that nice to see how they've really come along this year? He was quick to point out that it wasn't just this year. Felt that it's that's been turning around ever since Romeo got there, and it's not always reflected in the one loss record. No, he said I I watched the Browns last year and I could see where they were getting better. I could see where he, his plan was starting to come along. Sammy Morris with 102 yards, now the third 100 yard rushing game of his career. Kyle Eckel, the former Navy midshipman in the backfield. He's gonna get the handoff. Trying the right side, running room to the 15 to the 12. <laughs> Lee Bodden might have saved the touchdown. Well, another good look here at what good football teams do. When confronted with a challenge of trying to put it away, good teams can put it away. You know, this, this would have been a bad place for a three and out. For this Patriots offense, and here they are now in scoring position. Now Evans and Echo in the backfield. On first down, Echo. Right up the gut, and not a whole lot there. Echo at 5'11, 237 pounds out of Navy. And we're coming up on the two minute warning. Two minutes to play in Foxborough. 27-17 pass. We're coming back. 
It's a doubleheader day here on CBS. Coming up next, the Denver Broncos hosting the San Diego Chargers. The 49ers at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Check your local listings. See which game's coming your way next. Brady going to throw for the end zone. Incomplete penalty marker. Sean Jones trying to cover Ben Watson, who was looking for his third TD catch of the day. And probably would have had it if Jones wouldn't have held him. Holding, 26, defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Jones saved a touchdown. He realized that he was had by Ben Watson. It, the penalty happened well before that, but he, he put a big-time grab on the tight end. And a handful of jersey, didn't yeah. he? Right. Looks like a cousin of mine. <laughs> Mike Vrabel I, is in. I hope none of your cousins are watching, <laughs> thinking that you, they're knows. the one you meant. He knows who he is. <laughs> Sean, wait a minute. Mike Vrabel is on the field. Mike Vrabel has 10 career touchdowns, nine of them receiving on nine career receptions. Tom Brady said when Vrabel and Seau come in the huddle, the median IQ drops 30 points. <laughs> That's kind of harsh. That's kind of harsh. harsh. Willie McGinnis on that st stopwatch Willie number 55. Willie McGinnis locked up there with Kyle Brady, the tight end. Takes the inside shoulder and then fights across his face. Gets upfield to the outside to make the hit. The guy who played yeah. for Romeo Cornell here in New England. Well, was happy to join up with him again in Cleveland. But what a huge part Willie McGinnis was of the Super Bowl teams here in New England. And I'll guarantee you that every single person sitting in this stadium has nothing but fond memories of Willie McGinnis and his contributions to the Patriots. A dozen years he played for this franchise. They took him fourth overall back in 94. And I'd say they got their money's worth. A minute 48 to play. That's how far the Patriots are from going 5 and 0. Oh. And the Browns will drop to 2 and 3. Heath Evans, Kyle Eckler in the backfield. This is Eckler. Picks his way to the five. And timeout taken by the Browns. Stops the clock at a minute 43. Cleveland now out of timeouts. Now before we sign off from Foxborough, we want to thank the MetLife Bloom for providing aerial coverage of everything that's happened down below. Look for Snoopy 1, Snoopy 2, and Snoopy 3 when they pass through a town near you. You can tell that fall, in terms of the fully exchanging, hasn't really hit New England yet. Just beginning to turn a little bit. Yeah, it'll be covered by the snow pretty soon. Well, you can take that and run with it, folks. <laughs> Although I do remember the Patriots starting a season one and three and winning the Super Bowl too. I just don't want to be the writer that brings that up to Bill <laughs> in the post-game press conference. <laughs> Prepare to have your head bitten off. Eckel. No further than the five. And the Browns are out of timeouts, and we have a minute and a half to play. And again, Bill Belichick, he's going to be unhappy. Tom Brady told us he was yelling at him, we can't run the ball into the end zone. Every time we get down there close, we got to throw the football. We can't run it. Well, here they are again. Can't. You know, he's just filling out his list. What can I get on him about? I remember playing for Bo Schembechler at Michigan, walking out of meetings, turning to one of my teammates and go, didn't we win? <laughs> that's, but that's what good coaches do. Now New England calls timeout. And that stops the clock with 57 seconds to play. It's a game where you strive for perfection. Teddy Bruschi looks on. You know, These Patriots will feel pretty good about this. And the Browns, well, still a lot of work to do. 
What's your assessment of Derek Anderson on the day? Pretty much what Bill Belichick told us to expect. Yeah, he, you know, he, he I don't think he played that poorly. You, you look at some of those interceptions, uh, it's certainly not his fault that Mike Vrabel hits in, uh, on the arm when he's attempting to throw. He can uh, take full responsibility for the first pick. Right. The first one, he forced it in there. Uh, Asante Samuel should have caught it himself and, instead of deflecting it to Junior Sam. The second one, he was passing it to someone else. Adalis Thomas got a hand on it, popped it up in the air again to Sam. So... Nothing to be ashamed of. On fourth down, Brady throws across the field. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Kyle Brady. From Tom to Kyle. It falls and the incomplete and the ball goes over on down. Well, another trip to the red zone without a, this time without even a field goal. Give him something to work on. That'll. May those be the extent of your problems. Being 5 0 put a shine on a lot of things, though, won't it? At least for the fans. It'll make a bad apple taste good. 52 seconds to play. The Browns unable to stop the clock. Anderson from the shotgun. Out of his own end zone over the middle, and that's complete. And the ball is dropped, picked up. Let's see what that's ruled. Looks like it's ruled a completed pass, and it's a touchdown by Randall Gay. Now, Kellen Winslow is going to argue that he never had possession of the ball. Well, we're inside the last two right. minutes, so it'll, it'll be looked at. Oh, yeah, it's automatically looked at by the replay official. No need and for I'll a coach's bet, challenge. I'll bet they want to hurry up and get this extra point off in a hurry. Oh, well, it looked to me like he secured the ball. Walt Coleman says, hold everything. Yeah. We're looking upstairs. At first blush, it looked like Kellen Winslow secured the ball and ran with it. Is it being bobbled? No bobble, no. but he did take... Uh, probably about a step and a half. The question is, did he take enough steps to justify it being a completed pass? I think that's a completed pass and a fumble. I think that thing is ruled correctly on the field. He's not bobbling that ball. He's got it securely in his hands. Just a tremendous job by Randall Gay of tomahawking the ball right out of there. Although I will tell you this, the NFL officials are told whenever there is a question, a, any question surrounding a play, and the question is between completion or incompletion, you are always to rule in the favor of incompletion. That you are supposed to say it's an incomplete pass. So that was... He's have, he'll have to overturn the call on the field. And see, Romeo Cornell will probably Down, preach step, turnovers. Step. Romeo Cornell will dream about turnovers tonight. See, I think that is a completed pass. If it's not, if it's not for Randall Gay knocking that ball away, that there's no way that Kellen Winslow gives up possession of that football. You got to give credit to Randall Gay for a good play. Here comes Walt Coleman. After reviewing the play, the receiver had two feet down with with a catch. The ball was knocked out for a fumble. The ruling on the field stands. Yeah, Touchdown. I think that's a good call. Kind of piling on for Romeo Cornell as he watches the scoreboard now go to 33-17 and Gustowski with a chance to double up the point total on the Browns. Well, that was no accident by Randall Gay. He he saw the football, and he intentionally tried to knock it out, and he did. A forced fumble, a recovery, and a touchdown. Triple header. Right there. Look at that slap motion by Randall Gay. And then he just... Yeah, I don't think there's any question. That is a good call by the officials on the field. 
Walt Coleman had all the time in the world to confirm it, but credit the officials who on the spot made the proper call in real speed. And Randall Gable, he sees that football out there. Kellen Winslow, I've had enough of you. I'm going for the goal. Four Cleveland turnovers, good for 21 New England points today. And the Browns join a long and illustrious list of teams that have been pummeled here at the Razor in New England. This stadium has become one of the great home field advantages in all of sport. Randall Gay, his second career touchdown. And Josh Cribbs now back inside is five for yet another kickoff from Steven Gustowski. Short one. From the 23 yard line. It's Jason Wright. And Wright across 40 to the 42. 37 seconds remain on the clock. So Derek Anderson's seventh career start is not a dandy. Anderson over the middle incomplete. Winslow, the intended receiver. Doubleheader action up next. Either the Chargers at the Broncos or the Ravens at San Francisco. That looked like a catchable ball by Kellen Winslow, didn't it? No, no. I think he's had a couple of catchable balls today yeah. that weren't caught. And the last two have been a bit of a problem. Anderson. And this time he hits Braylon Edwards. Edwards to the 30, 25, and out of bounds short of the 20 yard line. 24 seconds on the clock. This Browns team, they're young. You take a look at guys like Edwards and, and Winslow and you know, you see a real upside here. And and their schedule, let's be realistic. You know, they, they fall now to two and three. But you take a look at their upcoming schedule. They've got Miami at home. They've got a bye. And then they play the Rams. Coming into today, two teams without a win. On first down, they come after Anderson. He gets rid of it in a hurry to Tim Carter, who has a touchdown catch today. And he is down to the 10-yard line. Clock continues to move. 13, 12, 11 seconds to play. And Anderson spikes the ball. He's it! He's it! <laughs> Mike Vrabel inspiring a little pushing and shoving as he went after the ball. Now, boys, 11 seconds left in the clock. Nothing worse than getting hurt in a game that's already been settled. Anderson spikes the ball and then all get out breaks loose behind him and he gets caught in the shuffle. Yeah, I, I, somehow Mike Vrabel was uh, still playing. Second and goal from the 10 yard line for Romeo Cornell's Cleveland Brown. 11 seconds on the clock. Anderson, back of the end zone, incomplete. It'll be third and goal. You know, when you sit with Derek Anderson, though, it's it's it's, it's the, the kid is he he's got great composure. He's loose. He's loose. He's there's a lot to like about him. You know, let's be realistic. It's not the most comfortable of positions. To having the team's number one draft choice sitting behind you. On third and goal, Anderson going to go for the corner. Braylon Edwards and complete. One second remaining. Ellis Hobbs playing defense.
Once again, doubleheader action coming up next. Most of you will see the San Diego Chargers at Denver. Others, the Baltimore Ravens in San Francisco against the 49ers. The New England Patriots, after this next snap, about to go 5-0 on the season. Anderson for the end zone. Going up and making the catch. No. Incomplete. Out of the end zone. Game's over. Kellen Winslow was out of the end zone. 34-17. The Patriots over the Browns. For Dan Deerdorf, Greg Gumbel, so long from Foxborough. Doubleheader action up next. This is the NFL on CBS. <laughs>